other insect in the world. We know about monarchs that migrate all the way from the northern United States to Mexico and back, but one animal doesn't do that. It takes about four or five generations. And one monarch might fly 1,200 miles, but these things fly further than that from the southern tip of India and other uh, countries near there in South Asia to islands in the middle of the Indian Ocean. They're very impressive, and they're found here in the United States as well. So, I'm going to take some of these dragonflies, which are going to be absolutely delicious when we're done cooking them. And I'm going to take a little bit of, uh, let's see, I'm going to heat up my sauce. So I'm going to do that. Actually, I'm going to give it a little barrier. So I'm going to heat up some sauce, and I'm going to melt a little more butter. And I'm going to cook a few mushrooms, and then I'm going to fry some dragonflies. I have tried dragonflies raw, and I do not care for them. A lot of times, if you do what I do for a living, people will say, well, have you ever tried that but raw? Some insects are delicious raw. Termites are very good. Honeypot ants are only eaten raw, and they're probably my favorite raw bug on the planet because they taste like a little ball of sugar, and I'm really a sugar fiend. You couldn't tell that by how active I am. But uh, anyway, I really like them raw. Dragonflies, when they're raw, taste a little bit too fishy to me, but when I fry them like this, they taste a lot like soft shell crab, and they're very, very good. So I have about eight of them that I'm going to cook for you guys over, over on this plate right here. And so, that's what I will do. While I'm cooking this, since I'm not great at doing two things at once, I kind of got to look down instead of at my audience, I will do a little Q&A. So if you have a question, find Holly with the mic, ask me, and I will answer it while I'm cooking for you guys. So does anyone have a question for Chef Zach? All right, come on, come on, come on, come on. What do you want to know? That's totally cool. I also like raising my hand. If you remember, you let me know. Who else has got a question? Something you want to know? All right, what do you want to know? How do you make dragonflies? How, how do you catch that many dragonflies in one Yes, yes. The dragonflies where I live, especially outside of New Orleans and our marshes and swamps, are really abundant. So if you walk around Philadelphia and it's like a good dragonfly day, you might see like three or five or ten of them in the park. I'll see like 50 of them in a space between me and you. I can't catch all 50 of them because they're so fast, they're such good flyers. But a lot of times I target the ones that land a lot, and I can sneak up on the ones that are landing. The ones that are in the air are really tricky though. Do they blend in is the question. Well, the green ones when they land on the ground are hard to spot, but they move around enough that I can usually find them. And Oh, no, oh I do, you, to, do you camouflage? I, guess I try to question. move slowly. That's a great question, though. You know, there are some insect nets that are green instead of white, and, and entomologists believe that it's harder for the bugs to see the net that's coming at them. So, by the way, what I'm doing is I'm treating my dragonflies like a piece of fish. I'm running them through an egg wash, and then I'm putting them in seasoned fish fry, and they'll look just like that when I'm done cooking them as well. And I'm going to make sure that this is hot. Yep, that's going to fry up pretty well. I'm going to make sure my heat is still on, and I'll ask. Okay, who else got a question? Right here, sweetie. Do you know which bugs are poisonous and which ones are not? That is an excellent question. I sometimes cover that when I'm when I'm doing my, my talk and I forgot to. Thanks so much for asking. As a general rule, I like to quote my friend David George Gordon, who wrote the Eat a Bug Cookbook. He says, if it's green or brown, go ahead and toss it down. If it's orange, red, or yellow, you should avoid that fellow. And that's a very simple way of remembering that if an insect is well camouflaged, it's probably tasty, and it's trying to hide from things that would usually eat it, like birds, and lizards, and certain kinds of rodents, and frogs, and turtles. But if an insect has bright colors, it's usually warning a predator that it either can sting or that it tastes bad. Now, that doesn't work all the time, but it usually works. Another thing I can tell you is that if you decide to go out and catch your own bugs, I always recommend that you go to a rural area, an area that doesn't have a lot of buildings and a lot of people. So like a field or a forest or a swamp or a marsh. And that way, you can be sure that your bug doesn't have a lot of pollutants on it. A lot of people say, oh, you don't want pesticides, right? If you catch a bug that's actively crawling or flying, it probably doesn't have an insecticide on it. But it may have residual lead dust or any other number of things that you might not want to eat. It's always nice to also wash your bugs off before you cook them. You can rinse them in a colander really lightly. 
So keep those things in mind. And the other thing is, if you're unsure as to whether or not you'll like a bug, you treat it like any other food. You have a small bite, and you see how it tastes, and you wait a few minutes, and you make sure your tummy doesn't feel bad, and then maybe you can have a larger bite about 20 minutes later, and so on. It's the same rule as if you were eating berries or anything else. So, another question? All right, we got another one. What's your question? Can we change your mind? I bet it be a so how, how do bugs that eat other bugs taste different than bugs who eat plants? Oh, oh, oh. Well, that's that's a hard question to answer. So I'm going to answer it by, by talking about the taste of bugs as a very general thing. I, I haven't noticed a distinct plant eaters taste this way, animal eaters taste that way. Ooh, my oil is a little hotter than I want. Gotta take these dragon flies out in a hurry. Um, they look nice, but they're a little more cooked than I like. So I'm going to do one batch for the people who like a little char, and one batch for the people who like them less, less cooked. That kind of well got hot. Wowza. Um, so my apologies for the overcooked dragon claws. The next batch will be better. And the mushrooms are almost done as well. Um, so I would say that if you try a bug without a lot of other textures and flavors involved, most of them taste kind of nutty. But then again, peanuts don't taste like almonds, and almonds don't taste like pecans, and pecans don't taste like hazelnuts. So saying that a bug tastes nutty isn't necessarily all that descriptive a thing. But I would say that regardless of whether it's a bug that eats other bugs, or whether it's a bug that eats uh, uh, plants, most of them taste kind of sort of like one, one sort of nut or another. That's very right. Wow. I forgot about what I was doing. Go like that. Now my sauce is ready. My mushrooms are ready. Four of my eight dragonflies are ready, and I can answer another question. You ready for another question? I, I don't even know where you are. Where I'm are over you? here. Oh, hi. I'm kind of flashing myself. You were short. I told there you. you. All right, so what's your question, Have you ever cooked caterpillars before? Well, the waxworms are caterpillars, so I've cooked those. And uh, I've got uh, someone who's got um, a tomato or tobacco hornworm recipe that I've tried. Well, it's a tomato hornworm recipe, but I've tried with tobacco hornworms. My tobacco hornworms were raised on an artificial diet. So instead of eating uh, leaf matter, they were eating sort of basically a reconstituted leaf matter. And I didn't much care for the way they tasted. I've also had a lot of raw caterpillars, most of which I haven't liked too much. But waxworms are very mild, and it's probably because you know they're feeding on wax. Um, and I'm trying to now stretch my memory banks. I don't think I've cooked silkworms before, even though they're readily available, and they get the same diet as the tomato, or the tobacco hornworms. So I'm not too experienced with caterpillar eating, although I will tell you that if you look at cultures around the world that eat bugs, the most common things are beetle larvae, crickets and grasshoppers, and caterpillars of various species. Which reminds me, if you ever go to sub-Saharan Africa, the Mopani worm can be served in open markets where they just cook them and, and, and have them in baskets and tables and plates, uh, or you can get canned Mopani worm. As a general rule, canned food is not as good as fresh food. And I've had some Mopani worm before, and it was very dry and crunchy and not, not all that flavorful. All right, we got another question right here. What's your question now? Um, can dragonflies sting? Dragonflies cannot sting. Some of the larger ones have strong jaws, and when they bite, it's quite a hard pinch. But if you know that it's coming, it's not, it doesn't hurt so much that you have to let it go. You know, like if a crab was grabbing you, you'd, let, you'd, you'd want the crab to let you go. The dragonflies aren't that bad. All right, I'm going to work really hard on not only cooking these last four dragonflies. I'm going to flip them in like 10 seconds. And that way, we'll have yummy dragonflies. And I, I think maybe yummy dragonflies. We'll see. Um, this is my best dish, so I certainly want it to be good. And I'm going to cook them super fast. And that's it. Like, that's it. I'm taking you guys out of the heat already. There we go. Nice. I'll take one more question. OK. And, and, then, and then we'll serve some dragonflies. And if you don't get your question during the show, Definitely come up and ask Chef Zach either after the show or down in the comments. We'll be happy to answer your questions. All right, go ahead, hon. Do you cook other things besides bugs? I do cook other things besides <laughs> bugs. Like when I go home at night, I'll put chicken in a skillet or steak on a grill. I sometimes make eggs. Um, I, I don't have a very big repertoire, but I, but I do like to cook things other than bugs. And that kind of gets me to a nice uh, sort of closing point, which is that the people who are really crusading for entomophagy, who want everybody to eat insects, they'll remind you that it's a very efficient thing to raise. If you want to raise a cow, you have to feed it this much grass to get this much edible cow meat when you're done. But bugs are much better at converting the plants that they eat into edible bug that you and I can eat. 
Uh, they also taste good in, in addition to being environmental friend, environmentally friendly. So there's lots of reasons to cook and eat bugs. And uh, I'm glad you brought that up. When I was a kid, if you told me you were going to open up a restaurant with raw fish, I would probably look at you funny. And now, sushi restaurants are everywhere. So the folks who are really excited about entomophagy and are watching it kind of rise in terms of people's interest in the United States, we're kind of hoping that it'll take off like that as well. I hope that's an answer to the question. I can't really remember exactly what the question was. Was I in the ballpark? Yeah, kind of, sort of. Yep. So, if you all would like to sample some bugs, I'm looking for the staff. We're staff? Coming. Okay, good. So, what we're going to do is have chocolate chirp cookies and crispy Cajun crickets, uh, I guess, on one side of the stage. And perhaps on the other side, we'll have red beans and yikes and the Odin hors d'oeuvres. Can you do that? Can we go like one side, other side? And that way we'll come down the aisle in an orderly fashion, if you will. Let me, before you get up though, let me go ahead and plate my dragonflies so that you can see how pretty they look. This is how we do the oat made hors d'oeuvres. We take a little mushroom, which we've already sauteed, and we set it on the plate. Bless you. And then we take the dragonflies, and we set them on top of the mushroom, and then we do a little drizzle of a sauce that I had already made a little earlier today, which is about one part butter, one part soy sauce, and one part Dijon mustard. And if you've never made a Dijon soy butter, it's just that easy. And I think it tastes good on anything that ever grew breath or grew roots. So you can put it on something other than bugs if you would like. And I'll show you how pretty this looks in just a minute. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna try to kind of gussy it up and make it look really nice by cutting a little piece of bell pepper and giving it some color. Hang on just one minute before I finish things up here. I'm